All right, so we're going to take a second look at how to prove God exists. And we're going to look specifically at our own bodies. We have about 37.2 trillion cells in our body. About 10 trillion of those cells have DNA in them, okay? So if you look at the cell, each individual cell, it's got a nucleus. Inside that nucleus, there's chromosomes, 23 pairs of chromosomes per cell. Uh, those chromosomes are, are basically compiled of DNA, DNA and proteins. Those strands of DNA, like you see right there, they're, if you take the strands of DNA in one human cell and you stretch it out in a straight line, you end up with about two meters high, so about six feet plus. If you take 10 trillion cells that contain those chromosomes in a human body, you could go to the sun and back about 70 times or so. Those DNA strands, they're divided into what we call genes. Each cell has about 20,000 different genes in them. So that's basically kind of an overlook at, at ourselves. Let's say that we've got a library, all right? The library's got books. Books have information. And in that library, the information that we have is on how to construct something you know, on how to build stone, steel, glass, and so on. Now, in that library, there's librarians. Those librarians, they take that information, they copy it, and then they give it to workers. Those workers carry that information and take it outside the library, and they give that information to laborers. The laborers take that information, and then they use it to build the stone, the steel, and the glass. Now the stone, the steel, and the glass are used to later on build buildings and cities, entire cities. Now, not so far away, there is another library with the same books, same information, but the librarians are taking different books and copying them. They're making copies of, out of different information. And that information is how to make wood and drywall and a whole different type of construction, right? Now. Again, those librarians are taking that information, they're giving it to workers. Those workers take that information and they transport it outside the library. And then they give it to the laborers, and the laborers make wood, they make drywall, and so on. And then they, they end up building a different city, but right next to it, another neighboring city. What you end up with is one city next to another, next to another, next to another, that eventually create the entire world. Okay? So that's the example we're going to use today. We have that those strands of DNA in us, right? The DNA is the information, is those books, basically. Now, each strand of DNA in the human body has roughly 20,000 genes. It has certain information on how to build certain things. Like, for example, the example we used was stone and steel. So one gene would say how to make stone, another would say how to make steel, and so on. Now, what happens is that we need those librarians, right? Those, re those readers. They come by and they copy, they tear apart our DNA. They basically cut that slice down the middle, that gene, right? And then they copy that gene, and then they give it to other workers. Right? They take that copy, and they give it to other workers. Those other workers, are, uh, take that copy, which is now called RNA. That RNA is taken by, right, by the workers to the outside. Those workers outside then give them to another protein. That protein is called a ribosome. Those ribosomes then change that information into protein. So that protein is now what we would call uh, well, there are different types of proteins. Some of them are proteins that uh, are for horm hormones. Others are skin cells. Others are, you know, proteins that form different things. So that's where our steel, our stone, and so on would come along. Now, another cell, another nucleus has, a diff has the same library, but different information is coming out, and it's made into a different city. That city is going to be part of bone structure. Um, the initial one we had was skin, and so on and so on. So what you end up with is different cells. Now, how does that ribosome 
turn that information into a protein. That's where it gets a little tricky. So what, what happens is we have the RNA strand. Basically, this is our copy, the RNA strand. What, what comes along is this little tRNA, right? This tRNA transforms or translates the RNA strand into amino acids. Those little amino acids come together and then they form a protein. Now that protein is then taken by receptors and kind of transformed and moved around and built into different things. Some of them are put into pathways, for example, in the cell. All right. Other ones are made into motor proteins. Basically what they do is they grab another protein and they walk it along those pathways and put them where they need to be. It's basically as if they have a mind of their own. It's their own little city and construction is going on constantly in these cities. And then these cities are being copied into more cities and so on and so on. And it just grows into what we said was the world is our actual human body. So what happens is we have to understand that RNA, which is the copy of the strand, that, G, that gene, uh, is translated into amino acid. That amino acid moves into, pro, tra transforms into protein, and that protein is then taken to where it needs to be, depending on the workers in the cell. Now, most interesting thing about this is that if you look at DNA. Our DNA strand is, is remember we said it was two meters long, but it's com compressed into this little cotton-like little X shape, right? Our chromosomes, basically X or Y, um, are 23 pairs. Now this pair of chromosomes, this pair, this chromosome pair, is basically DNA wrapped around little proteins that hold them together. That's what, that's what the job is. Now, the interesting thing is that those proteins that hold the DNA together, those proteins come from DNA. Without DNA, you couldn't understand what proteins were needed. So something had to move those motor proteins and so on. They have to move proteins around into where they need to be. So basically, you need DNA to make protein, and you need protein to hold DNA in place. Another interesting cycle is you need tRNA to read the RNA to make proteins that will take apart the DNA to make RNA to transform, to be read by tRNA, and those proteins have to do with building that whole construct. So basically, the proteins need are needed to read the books. The books are needed to make the proteins. The librarians, those workers, are needed to make the books. The books are needed to tell us how to make the librarians, in this case. The question is, is in that cycle, what came first? And it's not a matter of what came first, the chicken or the egg. That's not the argument. Because if you take away the egg, the chicken will survive. And if you take away the chicken, the egg will hatch and it'll survive. The problem with this example is if you take one of them out, the other one ceases to exist. Proteins are needed to hold the DNA together. And are needed to read the DNA. The DNA is needed to be read by protein so that it can be made. So if you take any of those out, the other will cease to exist. That can only mean one thing, is that both of them had to be created at the same time. That's not coincidence. Coincidence doesn't do that. Where two things simultaneously at least two things in our example, DNA and, and uh, protein, also tRNA, RNA, the fact that that specific protein had a specific job to make other things to rely on it. You take anything out of that equation and our bodies would cease to exist. That can't be coincidence.
you can't say that the library came into existence randomly without the workers because then you'd end up with a library that's just there and it doesn't do anything it doesn't build the city and you can't have workers to build the city without the library without the books because they need that information so workers that don't know how to build a city can't build a city and knowledge of how the city is built without workers to execute that knowledge won't build the city same thing with our example proteins are needed to read the DNA to construct the cells DNA is needed for proteins to read to construct the cells and the cells themselves the cells themselves are made of proteins in the DNA among other things that shows that this is a design this was intended this was done by someone who is all-knowing someone that knows the information needed to build the cell someone that knows the process of which a cell needs to be made and someone that put all of that in motion otherwise it couldn't exist that's how we know that a creator created life that's how we know that our cells our bodies came together through knowledge design and creation that's how we know God exists